again. Uh, this is Kevin Ring here. Today I'm going to show you how to create and export a projection study using the Disguise Designer software. So remember, Designer is the software that runs the Disguise program, and uh, the software is completely free at disguise.1. Uh, you do not require a Disguise hardware media server to use this software. So I'm going to use my laptop and I'm going to create and export a projection study. So as always in, D in D3, whenever you build a new project, you're given three things. Surface 1, Projector 1, and our good friend Puck, P-U-C-K. Now just to really look at the projection workflow, I'm going to go ahead and delete these pre-built projectors and surfaces for us. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a projection surface or a screen. I'm just going to call it wide screen. And as always, Disguise gives us a new rectangle mesh at position 000, with a scale of 111 with a resolution of 256, 256. I'm going to go ahead and increase the scale. I'll do a 12 by 3, for example. And I'm going to change the offset and put this up in the air. And I'm going to set up a three projector blend. I'm just taking a guess at the resolution. Uh, I'll just do 5120 by 1080 as my canvas. It's probably wrong, uh, but that's okay. And now I'm going to add a projector. So I said I'm going to do a three projector blend. So I'm going to add projector one, which I'll just call one. And just like before, the projector is positioned. Uh, it's not necessarily at zero, 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 but it's darn close. I think it's negative two. So with projectors, uh, there's two unique parameters you need to adjust. You need to adjust the physical offset, as in where the projector itself lives in the 3D venue. And then what is it looking at? Because projectors can point up, down, left, right, forward, backward. We don't know. You need to tell us. So here's a little hint for you. If I want my projector pointing at my screen, I can use the screen's offset as the look at position. So for example, my screen is 0, 3.50. 0. So if I tell my projector to look at 0, 3.5, 0, it is looking at the projection surface. So now I'm going to raise my projector up. And notice as I flatten it out, the rotation zeroes out. Uh, this is going to be my first of three projectors, so I am going to move it house left, but I'm also going to make sure I change the look at position as well. Cool. Now at this point I can change the Z position, make the projector a little larger. And remember, projectors are really cool in the sense that they have one shift. So rather than uh, moving the projector itself, I can always lens shift it on screen or off screen. Uh, we also change. We also have the lensing defaulting at 1.5. If you know if you have a shorter throw lens, you can change that here. Maybe I'm doing a 1.16. So at this point now, I can change my throw based on what I'm doing. And yeah, I'll do negative 3.2, negative 3.3. Cool. Now the work's not done. Uh, I need to tell the projector what surface or surface is it's going to be rendering and projecting onto. Uh, I do that under the projector properties. With one scan, I can right click the projector and get back to these properties. I'm going to tell this to point at widescreen. Cool. So I need to add two more projectors. I could right click the stage, hit the projector, change the lookout, change the offset, or I can duplicate this projector and change a few parameters. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to right click the projector, bring up the properties. And now here's where we kind of get inceptioned on here. I'm going to right click the properties window to inspect the properties. Now the option to rename or duplicate. So I'm going to rename this, I'm going to duplicate the projector and call it projector two. So you see the green frustrum here. So I now have the red frustrum and the green frustrum. I'm now going to move this projector on stage a bit. In fact, I'll even just zero it out. And uh, that's pretty darn good. And because it's a duplication, it's already looking at projection on the widescreen projection surface. So I'm now going to duplicate this projector. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to duplicate projector number one, because watch this. If I duplicate projector number one, call it number three. And I have number three over here, 
And remember, you can also hit Control P, Control P as in projector, to bring up the projector's uh, properties as well. So I have projector one, and I also have projector three. So if projector one is at negative 3.3, looking at negative 3.3, and projector three is going to be the adverse of that, we can get, safely assume that the position will be positive 3.3 positive 3.3 and just like that we are pretty darn good now with the skies we've told the skies where the screen is where the projectors are uh, what projectors are pointing at so if I change my perspective camera which is my visualizer camera and I can do this by right clicking into the sky there's another way I can get through here through stage uh, cameras and then visualizer camera if I go down to uh, stage render i can change how my visualizer camera is being rendered by default we're in schematic mode but i can change to lux mode which now will illuminate based on the light output but my personal favorite is what's called heat map so heat map is now going to show us the actual reflected nits of the screen surface based off our projectors so we see we have the two hotspots three and white three projector blend you always take the number of overlaps and subtract one and that number of projectors subtract one that tells the number of overlaps with two overlaps and we can see it's basically twice as hot in the center makes sense because uh, there's you know two lamps pointing there we can see with the frustrum now here's where disguise is really really cool i'm going to go into my projectors tab and i'm going to turn on dynamic blend and just like that the overlap and uh, feathering is done for us. So here it is on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. I'll turn it back on and change back to schematic mode. Now, as long as reality matches what we have here in disguise, it's going to be pretty darn accurate. So what I can do now is I can actually export this information as a PDF or a CSV file, hand this to my projectionist on show site, and now they have all the information. So to do so, I'm gonna right click where it says stage at the top, and I'm gonna go down to projector study. I'm gonna have it be luminance, called projector study, I'm gonna hit export. So now this is gonna go into my project folder. So if I go into my project folder, there's a new subfolder here called reports. Open this up, and sure enough, here's an Excel and a PDF. If I open this up, here is my exported heat map. So here's my, my projection study. So it's showing me the three projectors with the frustrums and the heat map on here uh, with a nice little table. Uh, here's showing projector one, projector two, projector three. And now here's a list that actually shows me the projectors, the name, the resolution, the brightness, and the lensing based off the throw ratio and the position in the venue. So as long as my projectionists take this projector and do negative 3.3, 3.5 up, negative 6.3 off the center, we're going to match reality, and we're going to be pretty, pretty, pretty darn close. Uh, once again, Disguise does not require hardware to do this. You can do this projection study on your laptop. Uh, in addition, the projection study will work on meshes with different with 3D objects. So if you're doing th uh, projection mapping, you can determine your coverage well before you get to show site. So that's uh, just another really, really fun thing you can do here with Disguise D3 uh, Projection Study. It's really, really cool. Uh, thanks again for watching. Uh, my shameless self-promotion, if you like the videos, definitely hit subscribe, like. If there's a video you want to see or a tutorial, just comment below, and I'm more than happy to get to it. Thanks again.